Hey everybody, I want to do a book recommendation today for um, family devotions and uh, home discipleship, and that is the Alfred Rex Bible Storybook. And I had this book in a previous video I did when I was talking about uh, doing uh, family discipleship, doing worship and prayer time at home with your family. And uh, I may have mentioned kind of what we do in that video. I have got the uh, family prayer from the Book of Common Prayer and adapted it and put it on a single card that's laminated that I use as my bookmark. And we were going through a devotion book, uh, kind of like the Upper Room devotion books that a lot of Methodists will use. It's got the um, a scripture and a reflection and a prayer for each day. We were going through one of those and we finished it and I think we kind of read it half half again, but um, then we started with the New Testament in this Bible storybook. And now that I've been using it for a little while, uh, I thought I could, I could do an honest review of it and uh, talk about it. So uh, this is the Alfred Rex Bible storybook and um, Nelda Hoyt Bannock, I hope I've pronounced that kind of right, uh, from Alfred Rex Publications uh, put this out. And it is... Uh, really big uh first thing which um it's nice in a way your kids can kind of gather around and see the illustrations very well um it's kind of a little bit unwieldy if you're trying to do it with one hand um but uh we're getting okay with that so what we'll do uh with family devotion time typically at the end of dinner is uh, we'll have the opening uh, verse and light a candle and then go straight into the Bible reading or devotion book reading. And then we'll say uh, one or more of the prayers. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple, but it's a way of instilling this, this discipline, the spiritual discipline uh, into my children and uh, showing them not only with my words, but with the way we actually arrange our family life that worship is important, that God is important, that the Bible is important. And that, I think, is a beautiful thing. So, Alfred Rex Study Bible has some cool uh, features and things I want to point out. Um, so, uh, a lot, and you see this on the cover, uh, there's Jesus blessing the children, very appropriate for a uh, family worship time, right? That's what we're trying to do here. Uh, Alfred Rex, uh, better known to most of us as King Alfred the Great, uh, was a, a uh, English or, or uh, Anglo-Saxon king and uh, very, very well known. He helped kind of uh, save uh, his kingdom from Viking invasions and it was a, a Christian kingdom, I think Wessex maybe, uh, down there in, in southwest England uh, that was holding out against pagan pagan uh, invasions, and he was able to, to unite the people and, and preserve, basically, Christian England. And so, uh, a quote here, he was also known as a scholar, and so there's a quote at the beginning on the, the back of the title page from King Alfred, uh, he seems to me a very foolish man and very wretched, who will not increase his understanding while he is in the world, and who will not ever wish and long to reach that endless life where all shall be made clear. So the desire for knowledge, the desire for uh, clarity, for uh, a vision of the, the truth uh, was something that animated uh, King Alfred and uh, shaped his kingdom. The foreword here uh, kind of talks about the Bible is uh, by the Right Reverend Ray Sutton, who is an Anglican bishop in the um, Reformed Episcopal Church, part of the Anglican Church in North America. So good uh, good introduction, uh, a good foreword. There's an introduction then from um, the editors who talk about how you could uh, go through this as a family in two years or perhaps as a school group in three years. And uh, that's the way the, the various accounts and stories from the Bible are broken up. And the table of contents is quite long. There are over 300 uh, readings or, or lessons or Bible stories from Scripture, and it does uh, take you through a lot of the Bible from creation uh, through the, the story of Abraham and Moses and the Exodus and the histories of Israel and into um, Jesus, the Messiah, and uh, the early church and ending in, in new creation with uh, the book of Revelation. So uh, 
one of the beautiful things about reading the Bible together as a family is that uh, you as the parent or, or the grandparent, you as the person doing the reading, you can learn a lot. And if you went through this whole thing and you had never read the Bible uh, cover to cover, this isn't every word of the Bible, but it does take you through uh, the big sweep of the Bible. And, and you'll have a much better understanding of who the major uh, figures are, how the different parts of the Bible fit together, how this is one great story of God reaching out to fallen humanity. Now, um, obviously, another big feature of this um, particular Bible is the artwork. And, and there's these wonderful kind of black and white uh, illustrations, sort of, I don't know if they're woodcuts or what, um, but uh, quite beautiful. These are the four evangelists right here, um, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, with their um, iconographic uh animals that each one is associated with. And um, there are um, lots of great illustrations here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, uh, encountering the angel in the temple. And um, there's, um, there's a preface to uh, the New Testament that kind of bridges the Old Testament and the New Testament historically. A couple other features uh, that I like about this Bible, uh, the stories, some of the longer ones, and this is good for my kids because they're little, uh, have kind of natural dividing points. If you don't want to read the whole passage at once, it shows you here's a good place to stop and you can come pick it back up and finish it uh, the next day or whenever you meet again. And at the end of each passage, there is a uh, discussion. So, um, Zechariah and the angel, and then they're in the italics right here, uh, there are discussion questions. Who was the ruler in Judea? This is, it's not discussion questions, it's like comprehension questions, like were, were they paying attention, you know? Who was the ruler in Judea? Uh, who was the angel? Why was Zechariah made mute, right? And um, so on. What did Gabriel say about the son they would have? And so that's good for my, my children anyway, especially my older child, uh, to kind of keep her engaged and paying attention. And she can often answer some of the questions, which I think is pretty good for a five-year-old. Um, so beautiful illustrations. I love, so here's the Annunciation of uh, the angel to uh, Mary, the mother of our Lord. One of the things that I uh, like about the art is that it is um, serious art. You know, a lot of Bible story books have this kind of juvenile or kiddie art and i wonder about that sometimes i mean i use books like that um but you know the medium is the message and i wonder if we're kind of subtly communicating to our children that all this bible stuff is kind of it's for kids it's, it's, it's sort of non uh adult or non uh, serious or something like that and so um one of the things i like about the art is that it's just it is serious art it's not um it's not juvenile or um uh, cute or, or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's aesthetically, uh, high quality, uh, art. And so, um, yeah, those are some of the great things about this. It does have, um, a couple other quotations. I mentioned the one from uh, King Alfred, Alfred Rex. Uh, there's a great quote right at the beginning of the introduction from St. Jerome. One of the early church fathers has this uh, wonderful quote, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Uh, often the temptation is to kind of try to remake God in our own image or make Jesus, remake Jesus uh, according to our own preferences, right? And what we find in the Bible is God as he reveals himself to us. And we, it's like take it or leave it, you know, we can receive God as who he really is, but we can't, we don't get to make him up, you know? And uh, I think that's kind of what St. Jerome is speaking to. If you don't know what the Bible says about the Lord, if you don't know what Christ teaches or values in the Bible, then do you? what do you really know about Christ? And um, great quote uh, from St. Jerome. I love the connection with the early church just in this, in this book. Uh, lots of uh, notes, indexes, index of names. There are uh, maps in the back and uh, things like that. There's a little biography of, of King Alfred um, Alfred Rex at the back. Um, 
and his life and a great uh, resource page of other books and sources. And there's really some good stuff in here. Just kind of looking through it um, very uh, simply. There's maps. Um, there's a, a diagram of, of the uh, tabernacle and the way the Israelites uh, camped in, in the, the Exodus. Uh, if I had one quibble with this thing, really, and this is for me a rather small thing because it's in the index, uh, there is a, a timeline of biblical history. And it basically, um, I would say, presumes, you might say, uh, presumes a young earth creationist uh, kind of um, timeline here. Now, there are a couple places where there's sort of a dotted line. So maybe they're saying, eh, maybe it's a little vague. But um, it, it does seem like, okay, here's the beginning of the world in the year zero, and there's Adam, uh, and this is 4,000 years B.C., and, you know, that's... Uh, um, a young earth creationist uh, timeline, which I don't personally uh, believe in uh, or think that it's necessary to believe in. But again, this is in the index. You're probably not going to be reading the indexes to your uh, children. And so um, another good feature about it, there are uh, kind of editorial uh, glosses and comments that sort of explain um, uh, people, kings, traditions, just very simple explanation of what it is if your children might be unfamiliar with it. Uh, so I think that is a good thing to have in here. But for the most part, as somebody who's read the Bible a lot, it sounds like it really is basically quoting or paraphrasing uh, the, the actual scripture as much as possible. And um, so it's not a real loose paraphrase uh, the way that you might expect. Uh, it stays pretty close in, in many respects to the biblical text. It does use a lot of like King Jamesy or older, maybe even Coverdale, I don't know, um, uh, names. And so anytime it talks about the Holy Spirit, it'll say Holy Ghost. And uh, the, the, the priest Zechariah is called uh, Zacharias. And there's just some things like that where for me it's a little jarring because I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> that's, you know, that's not what I'm used to calling that person. Uh, but that is what some of the older translations have. And so um, that's why you get that. And I just kind of gloss that as I'm reading it and, and just use what I'm used to when I read it to my kids. Uh, other thing about this that, um, uh, it, as I said, it has the comprehension questions at the end of each section. I usually add a couple of um, more kind of discussion questions or asking you know, uh, teasing out a little bit like, well, what did this person do wrong? Or, you know, what, what did they learn? Or what did God show them? You know, and, and try to, to have a little bit more discussion, just a little bit uh, with my kids. And I think that's a good thing to do. So uh, on the whole, uh, Alfred Rex Bible Storybook. You can get this at Alfred, A-E-L-F-R-E-D, R-E-X.com, uh, Alfred Rex.com. And um, there are older editions of this, and I don't know if they have the same kind of glossy school textbook uh, hardcover or if it's cloth back or, or something different, but I have seen older editions of this for like $150, $200. Um, don't pay that much because you can go to their website and get it for less. I think it's like 30 or 40 or something, um, maybe 50, but it's, it's not 200. So, um, Go check that out if you are looking for a uh, Bible study tool for family devotion time, perhaps, um, or to give as a gift. I think this would make a great gift. So I hope uh, that's a good resource for you. And until we connect again, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. Amen.